But first, I want to talk to this man because he's actually the reason why I learned about Yoel Romero way back when. And now he's cornering a fighter up against Yoel Romero this Saturday. He's Paulo Costa's guy. He's maybe the front runner. 2019 Coach of the Year as we sit here on this August, look at him. There he is, the great Captain Eric Albaracin. Always stylish. How are you, Eric? And you, and, and you always know how to get me started at the beginning of the show. Maybe, <laughs> maybe the front runner. Listen. Who else got four belts right now? That's true. You're killing it. And a big fight for your guy, Paulo four Costa. And I, we got the number one title coming up right now. Yes. Number one title contender in my eyes. L listen, I can't, I, can't, I can't anoint someone, you know, the, the, the winner in August. I don't feel like that's fair. But I, I feel like, you know, we're, you know there's, there's Eugene Behrman out in uh, Auckland. There's, there's other people doing great things. But you're certainly on everyone's radar. So good on you. By the way, this outfit is phenomenal. What do we got here? What are we wearing? What is this jacket? Oh, you know me. I'm Gucci. Come on, <laughs> all the way down to the shoes. Look at this guy. The most, I'll tell you what, most stylish coach. You can win that award in August, no problem. Um, so, yes. I just got off the plane. We just got off the plane, 24-hour flight, Paulo and I from uh, Belo Horizonte, Brazil. And we just arrived, and so I haven't even changed. Wait, you wore that on the plane? Yeah, it's kind of cold down there. Oh, okay. Wow. That's... And we fl I fl uh, flew through Chile where it's real cold. Okay. Um, so I can't wait for this fight. I feel like it's flying under the radar because of the top two fights, but I love it. And I love the symbolism of you. Again, I've told this story before. We've talked about it. 2011, I'm in Rio. My flight gets canceled. I go to Big Nog's gym. You write on a piece of paper, Yoel Romero, the Olympian. This man's going to be a future UFC champion. You were that high on him. I had not heard of him back then. Now you're coaching your guy against him. Is this fun for you? Is this kind of like a dream scenario? Yes, it is. Uh, you know, a lot of people keep asking me, is this what you wanted? Or, or you know, I, really, they're asking about being so busy and traveling and, and, and getting all these big fights. And I'm like, listen, I was begging for food. Now I can't complain that my plate is full. So this is what I want. Yeah, this is exactly what I wanted, you know, to fight the best. And in my eyes, Yoel already won the world title. I think he is the world champion. I think he, he won uh, that last fight. Uh, you know, three knockdowns. I think he is the best 185 pounder uh, that he that Paulo can fight right now. I think this is this is like I've been treating this like a world title fight. Well, the stakes are definitely big. I, I would imagine for your guy, he wins. He's the number one contender, right? There's no like the win, getting the winner of Adesanya Whitaker. Is that how you view it? And we'll knock that guy from Auckland right out of the picture. Whoever, whatever you say. Whoever you said from Auckland, he's out. We're coming after who? They're Auckland's in New Zealand, so uh, I I I, th I assume that's Israel's coach. So uh, yeah, we'll go after him t next if Israel wins. Right. Um, yeah, you're talking about Eugene Behrman, who's his coach at City Kickboxing. But this fight, for me, feels like a very personal one. Like, they don't like each other. They've said a lot of things about each other, Costa and Romero. How has Paulo been? Because I feel like no one's really, you know, no one's really riled him up in his UFC career thus far, but things have been said here. Um, do you feel like he's more emotional? Do you get the sense that this means a little more to him this time around? Yes. Uh, I've seen him extra focused, you know, uh, practicing, you know, doing everything that he needs to do, relaxation techniques, breathing techniques, mindfulness techniques on top of the uh, of training, the hard training that he does every day. I would imagine, uh, even though English isn't his first language, he's aware of people accusing him of being on PEDs and things like that. Does that stuff bother him? I think I, I think it does, but I think it, I think he's kind of just gotten sick of it, where he just doesn't even pay attention to it anymore. He just considers them uh, like haters, social media trolls or something. So, kind of just doesn't allow it to affect him. Okay, does he read that stuff? Do you find him on his phone? I mean, it's hard, to, it's hard to escape <laughs> the trolls these days, right? Because it comes right to your phone. Uh, you have to tell him to, yeah, he's a, to knock it off? And he's on his phone 24-7, so... Uh-oh. Uh, I, yeah, yeah, I have no idea what he's looking at when he's on his phone, so... No, I haven't told him. He's on his phone too much, though, you're saying. It sounds like me and my kids. <laughs> 
All most MMA fighters, at least the ones that I'm with, right? They're always on their phone. What are they Social doing media. on their phone? Just looking at stuff. I mean, I mean, they could be scouting fights. That's what I do on my phone. Sure, sure. Yes, you are. Uh, you, you're one of the quickest repliers of anyone out there. When I send you a text, literally within 0.5 seconds, you're on there. It's incredible. Um, we obviously haven't seen Paulo in quite some time. It's going to be 13 months by the time this fight happens that we that we last saw him. A little over 13 months. Are you worried about? "Quote unquote cage rust, him trying to feel things out. Also for Romero, it's been quite some time—14 months since his last fight. Are, are you worried at all, though, about your guy and you know just the inactivity over the past year? No, he's been training. Uh, I mean, watching him in the cage, it doesn't look like he's lost a step. So I'm planning on that transitioning right into Saturday night. It doesn't look—it doesn't look like he has any rust. Um, you know, he's young, so we have that advantage, even though uh, Yoel's like a freak of nature, or he is a freak of nature. So, you know, we're, I'm hoping a 42-year-old Rome, Yoel Romero shows up. You know, I always say when you start getting into your 40s from one fight to the next, you could actually fight your age. And uh, I've, we've seen that happen a few times in MMA where one fight, the 40-year-old, 45-year-old looks – like he's 25 in the next fight, he looks like he's 45. So, uh, you know, hopefully that the age factor affects him more with the rust than it will us. What's the key to beating you all, in your opinion? Wow. Uh, being unpredictable, um, not falling for his unpredictability. He's very unpredictable. Uh, you know, and, and staying calm and don't panic. You know, champions don't have panic buttons. You know, something's always going to, usually in a fight with Yoel Romero, but almost in every big fight I've ever been in, there's always drama for some reason, whether it's getting kicked to the, to the, you know, kicked in the groin or getting poked in the eye or, or knocking a guy out in 32 seconds and the people think it's not, you know, uh, it was stopped too slow or going in there with a broken ankle. A lot of stuff happens. So don't, there is no panic button when it comes to being a champion. And that's uh, staying calm and composed in this fight is, is one of the keys. Like you said, you know about champions. Henry Cejudo, double champion. Patricio Pitbull, double champion in Bellator. I have to ask you about Henry. Uh, he, he's now calling out Valentina Shevchenko, intergender championship. <laughs> What do you make of this guy? Has he gone too far? Has it has it taken over him? The the gimmick, the cringe, mm -hmm. or is this great? Do you love this sort of thing? Man, I've been in Brazil for like three weeks. I can't claim anything <laughs> he's doing now. No, I'm kidding. But you know what? Henry's doing his thing. I just I was telling. I think I tweeted somebody. I was like, hey, he saved the flyweight division his last fight. You don't think he knows what he's doing? He's probably trying to get a date with Valentina. For all we know, if she's single. <laughs> He's just trying to get. He's just trying to get on the board. He's Who incredible. Knows? He's so entertaining. Uh, I'm really enjoying him these days. He's very funny. He's he's talking about Frankie Edgar, all this stuff. If it was up to you, obviously we have some time, right? Because he he he's probably not coming back till January, February with the shoulder, right? Right. Okay. So if it was up to you, who would you like to see him fight next, and in which weight class? You know. Uh, I like that beef that Uriah and Hit have ha had going. Okay. It, just because it's fresh, Uriah's you know a legend. He you know he's the one to put these little guys on the map when he was over at WEC. Um, he's a pioneer, so you know Henry's on a legend ass beating tour. So I think uh, that would be a good one. You know Frankie's another legend, but you know Frankie's coming off a loss, and he probably's gonna have a fight already a fighter at least a fight by the time henry's back so we don't know what's going to happen there right um yeah i mean i i've heard dana white wants him to fight joseph benavidez let's see let's see what happens when henry's you know shoulders 100 percent. you know how's his his body is it did he put on more muscle did he lose muscle is he small is he in the 40s is he in the 150s but i think that's going to play a factor so I know the the first thing that people are going to say is, 
What about Aljamain Sterling? You didn't mention him. What about Piotr Jan? You didn't mention him. You're talking about all the old guys. What would be your response? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Henry's Henry's got two belts now. You got to think he's like the face of the UFC right now. Olympic gold medalist, two champs. He was asking, he was trying to get a third, uh, another belt. I don't know. Uh, you know, that still could be in the future. I think um, you know, Henry wants big fights and i don't blame him he's been he's been competing since he was uh at this highest level since he was a sophomore in high school so you know kind of like george masvidal he's saying i want big fights henry wants big fights and george masvidal can turn down leon edwards why can't henry turn down one of those other two guys that he that uh haven't been at the top of the game for as long you guys still talk about 145? That's a real thing. You know, I thought it was. I, I, I when it was when Frankie had a chance when he was still uh, at 45 and win a belt because I thought it was because of the size. You know, Henry can can fight any of those guys, but we wanted a legend, a former champion, um, a guy that's fighting in all different weight classes and and. And that was Frankie, and I think that's what intrigued, intrigued us, intrigued us about that fight at 145. Um, so yeah, but something, anything can always happen. You know, something else, someone else jumps up, and and we still got the belts, and we go and want to go for a third one. You know, someone comes in that we think is a good match, a good fight. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we trained the Patricio Pitbull. The Patricio Pitbull is really a 135 pounder in my eyes, and he's a 155-pound champ in Bellator, lightweight champ and featherweight champ. So you know, I think both those guys can, you know, I think Patricia can go down to 135, and Henry can maybe even go up to 145 one, one day for the right matchup for a belt. Break Henry, all the, break the mold. Henry has talked about, you know, like, hey, you know, this is all well and good, but for my next fight, I want to get paid. If not, I'm giving up the titles. Is he just saying that, or has he said to you privately, like, it's time for me to get paid, or else I'm not interested in doing this anymore? No, he hasn't. He hasn't talked about. We really don't talk about those kind of money wise. We we mostly talk about who we're gonna fight, ex- executing the the game plan for the fights, just things like that. But as far as Giving it up, I, I doubt Henry wants. Henry wants. Henry wants to leave this sport the uh, undeniable uh, goat. Yes, the goat of the fighters, the goat of the the cringe, all that stuff. It's great. Whatever he's doing, he needs to keep it up. Does it Does it bother you guys? Like, if Pitbull was in the UFC with the same belts, the same accolades, way more people would know who he is. Now, like I saw him at I think two thirty nine. He's walking around and like no one really recognizes him. Does that bother you? A, a little bit because I know deep down he could beat all these guys. Right. I know. I mean, people people just think, oh, he's in Bellator, he can't be good because you have to be in the UFC to be good. That that's that's not true. I mean, I I got Bellator fighters, UFC champions, Bellator champions, one fighters, all in the same room. They all train with each other. They're all you see who could who would win and how well they could do against those guys. So, yeah, I would I'd put. Patricio Pit Bull at the top, top of the totem pole, top of the heap at 145. And he could beat to, at 155, he he would give trouble to a lot of those guys. I think 145 he would be his best weight, but he could definitely be a bad matchup for any of those guys at lightweight as well. Let's end on Paulo. How does he win on Saturday, in your opinion? How do you envision it? Knockout. Knockout, damn. Knockout. Really? Knockout. We're going to... You know, I think both chins are going to be tested. Uh, but, you know, go to the younger guy. Plus, we've been, we've been getting ready for this for a long time, uh, for a while. And uh, who better to do it against than one of the greatest, to me, with probably the greatest uh, MMA wrestler, the guy with the most credentials, the guy that everybody was scared of in, in, in the Olympics and the World Championships. Uh, this, is, this is a great challenge for me. Uh, and, and an honor to, to help uh, Paulo prepare for this fight.
Well, I appreciate you doing this, Eric. I know you just flew in, probably a little tired, uh, but I just wanted to get your insight before this one. It's going to be special. I'm really looking forward to it. Good luck to you and Paolo, and hopefully we'll see you out there and uh, keep on being the stylish coach. But I, I will confidently uh -huh. say 2019 Stylish Coach of the Year, Captain Eric, and, and maybe if things continue <laughs> to go your way, the more important one come December. Saturday, I'm locking it down. Saturday. That's none. it. All you right. Fair enough. All right. I believe so. I look we forward got more to fights. Patrice O'Pitt Bulls fighting Juan Archuleta. Leandro Higo's fighting AKA's Sean Bunch on the same day. Uh, you know, Patrice's fighting in Japan in the Grand Prix. We got a lot of stuff coming up. So this, this year's, it's about to get crazy. My first six months is crazy. This next six months is crazy. And the next six days, yes. UFC 241 on ESPN. Don't forget to get that pay-per-view. Go through ESPN+. Plus. <laughs> oh, look at you. Wow. Did my boss tell you to say that? By the way, uh, Patricky Grand Prix, what are you talking about? What is that? Ryzen. What's He's that? He's getting borrowed to, to Ryzen in October. Really? I didn't know about this. Yeah. Tell us he more. He wins that. If he, if he's in the lightweight tournament. Whoa. Gonna do a, Ryzen's going to do a lightweight tournament. That's fun. And you know what? I'm not sure if it's going to be more than one fight in one, in one night. It might be. Wow. Uh, it might be the old school style, um, but uh, it's definitely pride rule style. Because, Who's he uh, fighting? We don't know yet. Okay. It is pride rule style, but what was funny is I was in, you know, not only was I training Paulo, I also shot out to train the Pitbull brothers a couple weeks ago while I was in Brazil. And, and Patricky comes in with this DVD, old school DVD from like the early 90s of, uh, shoot box like Vanderlei Silva, Shogun, Hua, and those guys. And they, I guess they made a DVD about soccer kicks. Wow. And uh, I was like, what is that? I go, You're watching DVDs? He's like, yeah, it's old school. It's uh, teaching them how to do some soccer kicks. So he's preparing for that. Okay. I'm looking It'll forward to that. That is great. Thank yeah. you for doing this, Eric. Good luck to you on Saturday. We'll see you out there. Okay, we'll see you. You're a mensch. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much. There he is, Captain Eric, with a shout-out to the uh, honorable mention, which comes out later today on my Instagram. Hello, everyone. It's Ariel Hawani. I just came here to thank you for watching our ESPN YouTube channel. It's the best. You know what else is the best? The ESPN app. You can get highlights, analysis, all that stuff and more. And if you want premium content and live streaming sports, there's only one place for all of that. It's ESPN+. Plus.